name is Elizabeth Hausler. What she has done is put together an organization called Build Change to create houses that save lives in disaster scenarios, earthquakes, typhoons, rainstorms, mudslides, and the like, by changing the way the houses are build, built in emerging countries. She's changed the whole construction industries in places where the houses and schools simply were not safe. Let's take a look at what she does. I was shocked by so many people being killed in earthquakes in emerging nations. It was the 2001 earthquake in Gujarat, in Kutch, India, that really got my attention. In this event, about 20,000 people were killed, and most people were killed because their stone masonry house collapsed on them. It's not the earthquake that kills people, it's a poorly built building. And this is a man-made problem, so there must be a man-made or a woman-made solution. We have trained over 25,000 people globally in the basics of safe construction, and we have created nearly 11,000 jobs. When the homeowner is in the driver's seat, we are building their confidence that the home will keep them safe. And that's the most important thing after a disaster. That's what enables them to sleep at night and to get back to a normal life. Ladies and gentlemen, Elizabeth Hausler. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for hanging in there. I know it's getting toward the end of the day, but I really appreciate you being here. So I grew up in a small town outside of Chicago, and neither one of my parents went to college. My dad owned a small business. He worked for 50 years. He's retired now, uh, building houses. He was a brick, a brick mason. So you already know what I did for my summer job in high school and college. And I laid bricks for my dad. It was a great job. You know, at the end of the day, you could actually see what you'd done, you'd build something with your hands. It was great. And it was fun. My dad was the king of construction site one-liners, most of which I can't repeat. <laughs> but it would get toward the end of the day in the afternoon, sort of like it is now. It would get kind of quiet on the construction site, just the sound of bricks clinking and trowels scraping. And my dad would just shout out, how time flies when you love your work. It was great. It was great. So my dad encouraged both, both of my sister and I to study engineering. And um, I was in the private sector for a while and then went back to grad school at UC Berkeley and got to do some really fantastic research to understand why does the ground liquefy in an earthquake and what can we do to prevent that from happening I got to spin a cubic meter of sand around on a big NASA centrifuge at 80 Gs and shake it and see what happened to it. And I was able to go up to the North Island of Hokkaido and set explosives off in the ground to s simulate an earthquake and, and see what happens. So a lot, of, a lot of great, interesting research, but I always had this tension with engineering, right? I love the problem solving, but I, I felt too disconnected from people. I always wondered, how is what I'm doing directly impacting someone's life? How is this making someone's life better? So towards the end of my PhD, there was an earthquake in India that killed about 20,000 people. Most people died because their house collapsed on them. Again, like the video says, it's a man-made problem, so there's got to be a man-made or a woman-made solution. And so it was at that moment that I, I, I decided I figured out what to do with my life. I was going to be able to carry on my dad's business, right, building houses, but with my own twist. So I started Build Change with the mission to save lives in Asia, Latin America, and the Caribbean by working with homeowners and governments to design and to learn how to build and to finance houses and schools so they don't collapse in earthquakes and typhoons or hurricanes. 
So right now, nearly a half a million people are living and learning in safer buildings. We've trained nearly 30,000 people in the basics of safe construction, created order, over 12,000 jobs. And we've helped to protect about a half a billion dollars worth of infrastructure assets around the world. So, but what do we do? How do we, how do we, how do we, how do we do this work? Well, we don't build buildings for people and we don't give things away. So when we started, when I started in this field, um, sweat equity was the norm. Sweat equity was the model, sort of making the homeowner do the unskilled labor, dig the, dig the ditches, push the wheelbarrows, um, but not engaging them in the decision-making process of their home. And so you had well-meaning NGOs or, or, or relief agencies making the decisions about the architecture, and you would have situations where the architect or the designer would put the toilet in the living room when the culture was to have the toilet, toilet outside, or put the door on the busy street when the culture was to have it on the courtyard. So by excluding homeowners to in, from the process, the wrong decisions get made and people get alienated. So we have helped to revolutionize the way the relief industry approaches post-disaster housing by putting homeowners in the driver's seat. So we use a cash, conditional cash plus technical assistance model where the homeowners are provided a cash grant in installments so that you have to follow the building standard and they're able to make the decisions about materials and architecture and where is their door and where is their toilet and how many bedrooms and all these sorts of things. And we find when the homeowners are engaged in this process and they're making these decisions, they invest more in building a resilient structure. So, but who actually builds the buildings, right? We don't bring in volunteers from outside. Um, we believe in building the capacity of local builders and putting money back into the local economy. So, but in the early days, organizations just wanted numbers. See how many builders you can train in a short period of time. Show them, just show them how to build a building. You can't learn how to lay bricks by watching someone else do it. So we do builders training on the job. All of our training is, is um, getting hands dirty. I started Build Change a few months before the Indian Ocean tsunami. We started our first program in Indonesia shortly after the tsunami happened. And uh, we used to have these bricklaying competitions. Uh, we call them Chepat Rapi Kuat, which in Bahasa Indonesia, Indonesia means fast, neat, strong. And in the early days, I could beat everyone. But you know, after a few weeks, month on the job, most of the builders were either as good of me as, as I was or way better. And so this is the beauty of what Build Change does. We don't give away fish, we teach people to fish. We put the knowledge and skills and capacity in the hands of, of local people, and they make change. They're the ones who make change. So I want to talk about women. So International Women's Day is coming up on March 8th. I hope you'll celebrate it. It is a build change organization-wide holiday. We, we thought we might just give the holiday just for women, but the guys on our team objected to that. Plus, we thought they might be lost without us. So everyone gets a day off. So more than half of our senior management team are women, and 75% of our head engineers are women. And these numbers, these ratios, are unprecedented in the engineering industry, in the construction industry, in the relief industry, even in social entrepreneurship. It's something I'm extremely proud of. But, but why is this important? Why is it important to have women in leadership and technical positions in engineering and construction and what we do? Well, it's because housing is a women's issue, right? Housing is a women's issue. And there are studies that indicate that women and children can be up to 14 times more likely to die in a natural disaster than men, 14 times. That's a huge difference. And so we also find that women, when faced with a disaster, when they become homeless after disaster, can be more exposed to violence and to trafficking. And that's why we need the great work of, of Brad and Polaris that we just heard about. 
So we, we also know that in the places where build change works, in Haiti, in the Philippines, in Indonesia, women are often running a business out of their home, right? So they lose their home. They also lose a way to earn income, right? One of my favorite stories is about Oramen Lamar, a matriarch of a very large family in Haiti. After the 2010 earthquake, her house was heavily damaged. She moved her family into a tent camp. And when we met her, she told us she thought she was going to die there. And those tent camps were terrible. Cholera, violence towards women, no way to get back to work. And so we looked at her house, our engineers, our Haitian engineers looked at her house, and we decided it could be retrofitted. It could be repaired and strengthened to withstand the next earthquake and hurricane. We also talked to her about how she used the house, and she told us, well, she ran a sewing business out of the house, so we needed to fix the part of the house that was actually used for her business. Within a few months, with her, her sons overseeing the construction process, us training the local builders on the job and making sure that the, you know, the building codes were met, she was back at home and back to work. It sounds simple, but there are thousands and thousands of stories like this and thousands and thousands of opportunities to, to improve people's lives. So when we finished one of our first houses in Aceh in Indonesia after the tsunami, um, you know, I, being the engineer that I am, kind of went with my detailed questionnaire to ask each homeowner about the process and that sort of thing. One of the first women that we worked with, mom with a family of five, who was living in a very simple sort of maybe 10 foot by 10 foot shack while our house was under construction, she cut through all of my questions and said, now I can sleep at night. So this is what Build Change does. We're trying to put the tools and the knowledge and the technology back into the hands of local people and let them control the process and let them design and build a safe house. So I want to finish by talking about housing as a global need. So in 2017, the hurricane season hit the GDP of Caribbean island nations harder than the Ebola crisis in West Africa. There are about three billion people living in substandard housing. Housing that's not going to resist the next earthquake or the next hurricane. Housing that doesn't have a toilet, housing that has a leaky roof. We have a program going on in, in Bogota and Medellin, Colombia, working with people and the government to strengthen buildings before the next earthquake. One of the homeowners um, whose house we strengthened, she said, my house was like a swimming pool before you guys came along. So not only are we strengthening buildings, we are also making small improvements like fixing leaky roofs that have a big impact on people's daily lives. So I know it might be kind of hard to relate, difficult to relate to housing as a global agenda topic. But we have coming up in just a sh two short months, the 50th anniversary of the US Fair Housing Act. And we've made great progress in some ways in our own country, but there's, there's still progress to be made here. We still have our own housing crisis in providing fair, affordable, disaster resilient housing, housing for everyone. But I'm kind of, kind of hoping that you in the audience here, you get what I'm talking about, right? Especially those of you from Naples who have been through a hurricane. You know what that's like. You know how scary it can be. But you probably have a house that was built according to the building code. You probably have insurance. And your house is probably not your only asset. For 50 to 90% of the world, a house is the family's only asset. So imagine losing that asset in just a few seconds, right? But imagine the solution. We have the solutions. We can, we can strengthen buildings. We can build safe, disaster-resilient houses. We can make changes in policies. We can create financial incentives. We can make this change. So please join us. Thank you.